Buffers are solutions that can resist changes to its pH when acids or bases are added. They occur when an equivalent amount of weak acid exists with its conjugate base. When equal amounts of weak acid and conjugate base are in the system, then the pH of the buffer is the acid's pKa. This allows for a convenient way to measure the equilibrium co constant of an acid by simply determining the pH at the half equivalence point. To calculate the expected pH of a buffer, we will use the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation. It is derived from the standard equilibrium expression, meaning that the equilibrium constant for the acid is equal to the activity of the conjugate base times the activity of hydronium divided by the activity of the acid. And this is equal to the average activity coefficient of the molality of the conjugate base at equilibrium divided by the standard molality times the activity of hydronium divided by the molality of the acid at equilibrium divided by the standard molality. And here I've left the activity of hydronium as is to make it simpler a little bit later on in the derivation. Now if I take the negative log of both sides and simplify, what I get is the negative log of the acid coefficient is equal to the pKa, and so that's what I have on the left hand side. And on the right hand side I can split apart all the terms within the logarithm using logarithm rules so that I get the negative log of the average activity coefficient minus the log of the molality of the conjugate base at equilibrium divided by the molality of the acid at equilibrium minus the log of the activity of H3O plus. And so then if I rearrange and move two of the terms to the left hand side what I get is the, the logarithm of the average activity coefficient plus the logarithm of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid plus pKa and that's equal to the pH because the pH is the negative log of the activity of a substance, in this case of H3O+. This is the modified Henderson-Hesselbach equation. The equation for ideal solutions, when the average activity coefficient is equal to 1, well this part is highlighted in blue being that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the logarithm of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid. And that when we're including the effect that there are ions in the solution, then we add then the log of the average activity coefficient. To calculate the average activity coefficient, we still use the Debye-Huckel limiting law or the Davies equation, depending upon the ionic strength. So a couple of things to keep in mind with the Henderson-Hesselbach equation is that it is most effective when the log of the ratio of the concentration of the conjugate base to the conjugate acid is between minus 1 and 1, and that the concentration of the buffer should be at least 100 times higher than the acid equilibrium constant. And this is because the Henderson-Hesselbach equation assumes that the amount of dissociation that occurs is very small, and so that the concentrations of the acid and the base are not significantly different from the amount originally added to the solution. Let's now use the Henderson-Hesselbach equation to calculate the expected pH of a buffer. So in this case we've got a 0.1 mole solution of acetic acid and 0.09 mole of its conjugate base, and so in this case, what we're going to do is calculate the pH for this buffer where the acid coefficient is, or the acid equilibrium coefficient is equal to 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5. And so if we we're going to do this without our average activity coefficient, then we would have then pH is equal to pKa plus the logarithm of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid. This means that our pH is equal to the negative log of 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5 plus the log of 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.1. And so that gives us then a pH of equal to 4.709. But in this case the question is asking us what is the pH of the buffer and that we know how to calculate this gamma plus minus. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to determine the gamma plus minus, we're going to then calculate then what is the pH of this buffer employing or taking into account the fact that it's a real solution. And so to do that then the first step is always, well we have to find out what is our ionic strength. And so that's again one half times the summation of the charge squared times the concentration divided by the standard concentration. And in this case I'm only going to have ions that come from the conjugate base, and so that I'm only going to have the Na plus and the CH3COO minus. And so those are the two terms that go into this um, ionic strength 
calculation. So I'm going to have, for the sodium plus, I have 1 squared times the concentration of the sodium divided by the standard concentration plus 1 minus squared times the concentration of the CH3COO minus divided by the standard concentration. My I then is going to be equal to 1 half times 0 0.09 plus 0 0.09 since that's the concentration of both because we have a 0 0.09 molal solution to start off with and so it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio so I get 0 0.9 plus 0 0.9 and so what that gives me then is an ionic strength of 0 0.09. Now this ionic strength if I take the square root of it that is going to be greater than 0 0.2 and so in this case we're going to employ the Davies equation. The Davies equation tells us that the log of the average activity coefficient is equal to negative 0.509 times the absolute value of the charge on the positive ion, the charge on the negative ion, and then we have the square root of the ionic strength divided by 1 plus the square root of the ionic strength minus 0.3 times the ionic strength. And so substituting in numbers I get the logarithm of gamma plus minus equal to negative 0.509 magnitude of 1 times negative 1 and I'm going to have the square root of 0 0.09 divided by 1 plus the square root of 0 0.09 minus 0 0.3 times 0 0.09. Let me just correct that mistake there. The logarithm of my gamma plus minus is equal to minus 0 0.509 times 0 0.20377. What this means is that my log of gamma plus minus and my average activity coefficient is equal to negative 0 0.1037. And I'm going to leave it in this form, this natural logarithm, the average activity coefficient, because when I take that into account in my Henderson-Hesselbach equation to get my modified Henderson-Hesselbach equation, well, that's equal to the pH of pKa plus the logarithm of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid. And to that, I'm adding the logarithm of gamma plus minus. And so in this case, I can then directly take this number that I've just calculated using the Davies equation and stick that right into my modified Henderson-Hesselbach equation. That means then that my pH is equal to 4.709 because I had this number from before when I calculated without my gamma plus minus. And from that I'm going to subtract 0 0.1037, which leaves me with a pH equal to 4.605. And so what we can see here is that when we don't include the effect of the ions in solution relative to when we do um, take into account the average activity coefficient, we actually get a much more significant difference between these two. And so what we can conclude then from this is that when we look at buffer solutions, it becomes important to take into account the average activity coefficient so that then we can get a much more reliable value for our expected pH of our buffer. Acid-base equilibria include ions in solution, which deviate properties of mixtures from ideal conditions. The deviation is quantified by the average activity coefficient, which can be calculated using the Debye-Huckel limiting law at low ionic strength and the Davies equation at high ionic strength. The average activity coefficient when incorporated into the Henderson-Hesselbach equation in order to predict the pH of buffers means that the pH is quantified as the pKa plus the logarithm of the concentration of the conjugate base over the conjugate acid, plus the logarithm of the average activity coefficient.